Hello guys, welcome to the C Sharp um, video tutorials. Um, in the last session, what we did was we learned about how to make a Hello World application in C Sharp using Visual Studio. Um, in this session, we will learn more stuff about this, and we'll be making more advanced stuff. Well, not really advanced, but advanced than the previous um, session. Uh, so we'll be learning about variables. This is exclusive for about well, it's about variables. We'll learn everything about about variables in this in this session. So let's begin. Um, so I will delete these two lines and because I want to make space for more stuff. So a variable is something in which you can store data uh, temporarily, um, and I'm saying temporarily because variables die after well. Um, well, at the end of a method or um, at the end of a scope, we'll cover more about scope later. So, also variables don't remain permanent. So, in, uh, so like if I've created a, a variable called x and if I've stored value of 50 in it, and if I close the program and if I start the program again, its value will be replaced. Um, and it will be its value will be zero again. So yeah, that would uh, that would not keep your values stored permanently. So if you're looking for creating a program that about like sales data or that kind of stuff, ideally you would want the save stuff in a file or in a or in a like database. But yeah. So. Um, why are they important? Uh, they're important because they are stored in RAM. RAM is the fastest memory unit available on your computer, so access time is quicker than a file. Um, they are also easy to, to create, maintain, and use. Um, uh, yeah, so they are the best. <laughs> they are the foundation of the entire thing, so yeah. Um, so they are divided into two types. One is primitive, and other is um, I want to say advanced, but they are called objects, well, classes, that kind of stuff. Um, pr the primitives. Okay, here's a key. Uh, everything, the type, if it appears blue, it's a primitive. So you have um, you have like basic types: int, um, bool, char means character string which is um, uh, a, a a sentence or a paragraph or yeah anything um, uh, double which is um, uh, which is led uh, which is like uh, numbers with points so you have the like 5.55 that's a double um, long which is more precise and it can handle uh, floating point numbers uh, float, which is also quite similar, but it's half the size of long. Um, decimal, decimal is C sharp's built-in um, thing where you can get double digits and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of cool, and it's the largest. It's I think it's 64 bit in size, but you don't need to worry about that. You just need to worry about type. So if you want to store something like 5, 10, 15, but not um, 2.5, 3.5, then you need an int. If you need to store something like true or false. Um, then you need a boolean. If you want to store something like A, B, C, D, like just one character, then you need char. If you need to store a sentence, say um, hello world, then you need a string. Um, if you want to store like 2.5, 3.5, 5.5, then you need a double. If you want to store like 2.5555554443333, that kind of long um, stuff, then you need a long or a float. And if you want more precision, then you need uh, to store stuff in decimal, which is the uh, the most precise. I think that's the most precise. But yeah, so we'll first create an integer variable called um, int my favorite number equals uh, nine. Um, now, to define a variable, you have the type, then you have the variable name, you assign it a value. And that's your value. Um, while defining a variable, you can choose to not assign a value to it, and that's perfectly fine. You can assign value to it afterwards. Um, however, it's it's just better to initialize variables anyway. So if you don't want to store anything, just just assign it zero. 
Also, um, in one block of code, you cannot have two variables of the same to uh, of the same name, even though if they are of different types. So, if I go double my my fav num equals zero, that will not work. That would cause a r a red line, and if you scroll down, you'll get an error. A local variable named my fav num is already defined in this scope, and if you and if you double click that it will take you to the line where the error is and you can see uh, when you highlight this uh, oops sorry yeah when you highlight this uh, that gets um, highlighted as well which indicates that it has the same name so yeah I'm just gonna uh, delete this line anyway um, right so you so we have created uh, an integer variable of uh, my fav num which um, we're gonna assign a value 9 then I'm going to create an integer, uh, a string of my uh, name equals uh, uh, equals Manthan. Um, then I'll create a boolean uh, gender uh, true, if, uh, which is male. Oops. True is male because um, that's just our rule. Uh, you can you can have your own rule. You can have true as as a female, but that doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so let's print the stuff out. So let's just say console dot right line. My name is name. Okay. Now what I did there was I joined two strings. To join two strings, you have a string which is uh, my name is and you say plus and then you give it another string which is which is that variable name so that replaces this with this and it would join them and then the uh, then the like, resulting output will be my name is mountain that would be the resulting output next thing control dot right line um, my favorite number my favorite number if if you just um if you're just wondering what just happened there it was just uh, as soon as you type a variable name my it just brings it up like that and you can either press enter or yeah yeah you have to press enter um so i'll close that and if you're wondering what's happening here um it we I'm joining a number to a string, and since this entire method is expecting a string, it would convert this to a string as well. So my fam num nine, so that is replaced by that, and it's added into this. So it would be whoops, my my favorite number is nine. That would be the um, sentence. Then, if you go ahead, console dot right line. My gender is uh, gender. Um, same thing here. It's just going to print my gender is true. And to stop the console window from um, collapsing on us. Let's just say console dot read line, and let's run the program. F5. That's our output. Um, my name is Manthan. My favorite number is nine. My gender is true. We will deal with the true thing later because we want it to print man or a woman, that kind of stuff. We don't want it to print true, 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 false, true. That's a bit confusing for some people, because people who don't know that true is male, they might confuse it with a female, that kind of stuff. So we want to avoid errors. So yeah. Um, I'm just going to close this now. Um, um, yeah, so there's another thing that you can do with integer variables, or any variable that holds a number. You can increment it. So you can say you have operators for it. You have operators plus plus and 
minus minus and depending where you put them it changes its value in that kind of way so if I want to increase the value of this by one I can say my favnum plus plus and yeah, that will increase the variable value by one so if I copy this if I print that again um, then it says my it would print the my favorite number again but since the value has been changed since I've um, I've, uh, I've added that in the um, code that would increment the value by one so its final value would be 10 um, also yeah so let's just run this for now and let's see what happens there we go my name is Manthan my favorite number is 9 gender is true my favorite number is 10 because it has been incremented yeah right um, I hope that makes sense if it if it doesn't just post a comment below and I'll answer as soon as possible um, so that now um, if I take this off and if I want to be stingy about lines of code that I write I can do it like this and that would still increment the number by 10 now here's a trick if you place it before the variable name it would increment the variable value which is that by one and then it would and then it would replace this by the new value so it would make it 10 if I put this if I put the plus plus after the um, variable name then it would replace the entire thing by the existing variable value which is 9 and then it would inc increment the value so that would still be 9 uh, to see this in, in action let's just press F5 and and you'll see that the value has not been in incremented at all and if I close the change this to uh, plus plus here like that and if I press F5 it would increase the variable name by 10 and then write the new value pretty cool stuff huh right so that's um, all about variables you have strings you can join strings you have you have um, you have numbers you can increase the value um, numbers and that kind of stuff but you can do more with, with numbers here's the thing uh, when you say int my fab, my fab num it allocates certain amount of memory to that now if you say long my fab num that would allocate more memory to it because long is larger than int um, you can see the com complete hierarchy in the C sharp API because that's not really a problem um, or you can just hover over and that would tell you it's a 32-bit signed integer um, so that is 32-bit if I say long my fav num uh, num if I hover over long that's a 64-bit signed integer so um, if I try to assign uh, if I say num equals my fav num that will not be a problem because my fav num is smaller than num since that is an int and that's a uh, that's a, of type long but if I do it the other way my fav num equals num then that would cause a problem uh, you can see the red um, squiggly line if you scroll down it would say cannot implicitly convert long to int an explicit conversion exists are you missing a cast so it gives you very cool suggestion that um, did you mean to do this and yeah so if you double click that it would take you right there and uh, it would give you this, the exact same error again if you hover over the the uh, yeah that thing um, so what you need is you need a cast a cast is it, it it sounds magical but it's actually not it's actually quite boring um, a cast is like you explicitly tell the compiler to change the type of this variable well to change to get the value inside this variable and to change the type of the variable to something else so since this is larger since this is long you need to, and since that is an integer you need to have an int cast here 
So you're converting long to an int. The problem, oops, uh, yeah, the um, okay. The problem is because I haven't assigned stuff to it. Yeah, so that is an integer. So so the cost has to be an integer, and this um, is the value that you want to change. The advantage of this is it allows you to convert stuff, which is it it allows you to assign stuff which you are not supposed to assign. The disadvantage comes in when because this is a 64-bit sign number, so you can have stuff like 2.2223333 um, that kind of stuff. Uh, Okay, sorry, you can have a huge number, and that would, um, and since an integer is smaller than a long, it would assign less stuff to it. But, well, we don't know the actual limit, but um, you, you can experiment this yourself. You can just put in a very long number, and that would lose its value a bit by a bit. So, yeah, this especially happens when you're trying to cast a decimal number to an integer so if you say if you change that to double 2.2 and if you do that to the end the value of my num at the end would be 2 because it can't fit this inside it's not built to fit 2.2 so if you run this you'll see my f my favorite number is 2 because it can't fit this. Uh, double is a double precision f f floating point number and it's it's huge in comparison to int. So and in here you are forcibly trying to fit that huge number into an int so it has to let go certain stuff. So that's what it does. I hope this session was helpful to you guys. Um, if you need help in your code or anything just put a comment or send me a message on on YouTube or yeah or email email me it's cool um, I will draw you out it's not a problem so till then have a great time bye bye see ya and have an awesome one <laughs>